Welcome to the next level. Hey everyone, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today we're going to be checking out a Bluetooth gaming controller that's compatible with iOS, Android, and Windows. And if you're looking to get one of these, you can get them at banggood.com for right around 30 bucks, and I'll make sure to put a link down below, plus a 10% off coupon code, and Banggood's got a lot of other stuff on there they are worth checking out. For myself, I'm not really into touchscreen gaming. I really like having those physical buttons to push. There's just something about it that makes it a better gaming experience. And this controller does exactly what I want to do. It turns my phone into the ultimate portable gaming machine. Inside the box you get a charging cable and you get up to about 10 hours of gameplay time. There's also a manual and of course the controller. And the quality of this controller feels pretty nice. On a lot of the cheaper controllers I play with, the buttons are kind of sloppy and loose feeling. But all the buttons on this controller feel nice and tight. And they don't feel like they're made of real cheap plastic. They actually feel like they're going to last. There's even some media control buttons at the bottom of the controller including a play button, volume buttons, fast forward, and rewind. Then on the opposite side we have a start button, a home button, and a select button. And at the top here there's a couple LED lights. One is to indicate when it's charging, and the other one's for Bluetooth pairing. It'll blink when it's in pairing mode and be solid when it's connected. Then at the very top of the controller we have two trigger buttons for the left and right side. Then at the very bottom here we have a USB port, and this is where we can either charge the controller, or we can use this for a wired connection to a PC. This controller also has a telescopic feature, so it can fit a wide variety of different phones and tablets, ranging from 5 to 10 inches wide. It has a lock button on the back to where you can open it to your desired width, and then once you get in position you go ahead and lock that button, and the opposite side is spring-loaded. And that spring tension gives it a nice tight grip, whether it's a phone or a tablet you're using. So this controller works with a lot of different devices, including Android tablets, Android phones, Windows PCs, and Apple products like your iPhones and iPads. But the compatibility with the iOS operating system is a little bit limited, but there is some games that do support this controller. I would say with the Android devices, the support and compatibility is much greater, and you can also use this on Android TV boxes and other devices that are Android powered. Alright, let's go ahead and try this out. So for my first test, we're going to try out the Amazon Fire HD tablet. And this is a 9 inch tablet, so it's a pretty good sized tablet. And what I usually do is I size it towards just a little bit smaller than the width of whatever I'm putting in there. Then I use that spring tension to get a nice grip on it. And what's nice about a setup like this is that the controller is actually holding the tablet. You don't have to find a stand to put your tablet on if you're holding a separate controller. Everything's all on one, so that makes it more convenient for gaming. For myself personally, my favorite device to use is just my phone. This is a Samsung S6 Active, and this phone's already a couple years old now, so it's not a crazy expensive phone, but it's a very capable phone. And it fits in this controller quite nicely. I even have a case on my phone, and that makes it a little bit thicker, but it still fits in here just fine. Even when I shake the controller around, it seems to stay in there just fine. There's even a built-in support that's at the bottom of the controller to help make your device that much more secure. But for my device, that's not really necessary, so I just like to keep it centered with the controller. And there's a really cool app out there if you want your screen to be able to rotate while you're gaming with this controller. There's an app called Rotation Lock Adaptive, and it's completely free. There is a couple ads on it here and there, though. And this allows you to change from portrait mode to landscape mode. And landscape mode makes a lot more sense if you're going to be gaming with these controllers. So now my home screen and everything will be in landscape mode, so you can navigate everything a lot easier. To connect the device to your controller, you want to open up your Bluetooth, turn it on, then scan for available devices, then on your controller you want to hold the X button and the home button at the same time for a few seconds and that will put it into pairing mode. Then if your device is compatible it should find the controller and give you an option to connect to it. And I've tested this on multiple Android devices and I was able to connect to most of my Android devices but for Apple devices I was only able to connect to newer devices like the iPhone 6 or higher. And for this video I'm just going to be doing testing on Android devices but I will do a follow up video and show compatibility with the iOS as well. And if you're on Google Play and you're looking for games that support controllers, just type in controller supported games and that'll bring up a big list of games you can choose from. There's also a lot of different emulators out there that are compatible with this controller. Uh, some for Super Nintendo, some for the Genesis, some for the Dreamcast, the Saturn, etc. It's also compatible with RetroArch, which is a program that allows you to play a lot of different emulators for all kinds of systems. Okay, I've already pre-installed a couple random games from this list, so let's go ahead and try out Drift Mania Championship 2. That shows that being supported for this controller, so let's open it up and test it out. And the controller worked first try. I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to configure anything. I just started the game, and the controller worked just like it's supposed to. The only problem I had is I was having more fun hitting the barrels than missing them. 
Here's another game you can find on Google Play. This is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Classic by Sega. And this is a free game, but it's filled with some ads, so if you want to get rid of those ads, you can pay two bucks and they will disappear. So this game works great with this controller too. There doesn't seem to be any lag. The buttons respond just like they should. And this is a very clean version of the game Sonic 2. If you like Sonic, I recommend it. Okay, let's check out RetroArch. And the controller works with this without having to do anything special. But to get RetroArch up and going, it will take a little bit of research to get all the emulators up and running. But once you have all that going, the controller does work well. So let's try out Super Mario All-Stars, a Super Nintendo game. And the controller works great, no lag, no issues. There's so many Mario games out there, but Mario Brothers 3, it might be my favorite Mario game ever. It's a hard one, there's just, there's so many of them, but Mario 3 is definitely up there on my list. But Super Mario World's not very far behind on that list. And I've played Super Nintendo games before on my phone, but I didn't use a controller, I was just using a touchscreen, and I didn't really enjoy it. When I'm using this controller and I have these physical buttons, it's a much more enjoyable experience to me. And here's Super Mario 64, also running on RetroArch, and my analog stick works great with this game. I've dealt with some controllers for Android in the past, and I'd always have to pre-configure and map all the buttons out. And that's what's nice about this controller, it seems to be pre-configured and ready to go for most emulators and games that are compatible with controllers on Android. Here's a PlayStation game, Tekken 3, also running on RetroArch with no issues. And I wasn't a PlayStation fan until later on in life, I was more of a Sega and Nintendo fan, but Tekken 3 was one of those games that kind of won me over and kind of drew me to the PlayStation. Alright, let's check out Sega's Virtual Racing, also running on RetroArch. And if you're an old school gamer like myself, then you probably remember when Virtual Racing came out. These graphics were state of the art, and the game looked amazing back then. But today, not so much. Okay, let's check out You Owe You Baus. This is a Sega Saturn emulator, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but whatever. So Sega Saturn emulation on Android is far from perfect, but there is a few games out there that play pretty well, and this controller works great with this emulator. Although this was the only emulator that I did have to pre-configure my controller and map all the buttons, but after doing that, it worked great. And an interesting fact, Sonic World was actually an early prototype for the game Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast. And here's another Saturn game, this is Knights in the Dream Christmas Edition, and I've heard if you beat this game you get to play as Sonic. I'm going to have to beat this game and try that out. And there's also an option to use the analog stick with the Sega Saturn emulator, and it works really well with this game. And if you know the history for the game Sonic Extreme, which was never officially released for the Sega Saturn, then you might know that one of the prototypes for Sonic Extreme actually used the gameplay engine from Nights into Dreams. Okay, time to check out a Dreamcast emulator. So let's boot a game up. And this has got to be one of my favorite intros for a video game system. I just I love when the Dreamcast logo boots up. And the controller works great with the simulator. I didn't have to configure anything. So Dreamcast simulation on Android is surprisingly better than Sega Saturn emulation. If you're looking for Dreamcast perfection, the emulation's not quite there yet. But in my opinion, I think it's plenty playable on Android. And the analog stick on the controller also works well with the Dreamcast emulator. So here's my overall thoughts for this controller. I don't think I have any complaints at all. This controller seems to do exactly what I want it to do. It seems to be built well, it plays well, it's highly compatible with Android devices. For 30 bucks, I was able to turn my phone into an awesome portable gaming machine. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. Also, you can now find me on Patreon if you want to help support the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of projects, some behind the scenes projects, some giveaways, all kinds of stuff. I'm trying to make this channel better, one bit at a time.